All right, so with the 23rd pick, we took um, D Ford from Auburn, uh, defensive end, outside linebacker, tremendous uh, person, and uh, extremely high motor on the football field, very intelligent player. Um, he's a concert pianist on, on top of being a heck of a football player, and so we look forward to bringing him into our defense. I, I think I've mentioned this, and, and John's mentioned it. You can't have enough good pass rushers, and, and, um, and the knee falls into, into that category. Had a bit of a knee injury this past season, and uh, worked through that as the season went on. He continued to get better. Ended up with uh, 10 and a half sacks this past season, which is a, a, a good, healthy number. Played his best football at the end of the year. Championship game was tremendous. He had a great uh, senior bowl, probably healthiest during that, during that period of the senior bowl. But, um, he's somebody that, uh, again, we added into, into Bob's defense and, and, uh, and really becomes a, a guy that, that, that can mix in with Tomba and Justin and, you know, all, all the, the good rushers of Poe that we, that we have. And we need that in the AFC West and all of the divisions that we'll publish. Questions. Where do you plan to use him, defensive end or outside linebacker? Well, we're, we're going to teach him how to play outside linebacker. He doesn't have uh, the snaps at outside linebacker. A little bit like Tom, when Tom came out. Um, and that, that, that's not where he's had the majority of the snaps. He's going to rush, rush defensive end. He's somebody uh, that you can work in there immediately in third down nickel situations. And, um, and as you know, percentage of our snaps uh, on defense end up leaning towards our nickel defense. Is he going to be a project then? No, I wouldn't say a project. I, I think he can make that conversion. I, that's, what, that's what we took. I always thought that, that he was uh, very capable of making that, that conversion. So kind of a preemptive thing, seeing that Tamba may be getting a little bit older, kind of maybe? I think it's more mixing them in with, with that group. Need as many of those guys you possibly can get out there, and it just gives you a ton of flexibility to do a different thing. Uh, he's rushed from the inside, he's rushed from the outside. He's uh, very quick and very fast. I'll probably tell you that he, if he wasn't the quickest defensive lineman off the ball uh, in this draft, uh, he surely he was close to it. So he's got great explosion off the foot. As you described him, it was almost like you were describing Tomba. Tremendous person, high motor, smart, musically inclined. Is you know, do you Tom, see similar Tom, traits? Did you see Tommy's rap tape? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure about the musically inclined. <laughs> um, but I, I, yeah, I, I think uh, um, if you look at both our outside linebacker. I mean, they're, they're, they're those, that's kind of what makes makes a good uh, a good outside linebacker. We're asking them to do different things. We're asking them to be able to work into coverage at the same time be able to rush, a, uh, rush the passer. And uh, we just think he's capable of doing that. Did you pick uh, forward? Did it happen even before you got on the clock? Did you, did you watch the board go down and say, that's a guy? That's it, yeah. That was it, yeah. And we, uh, we'd identified him uh, a while back. and. Uh, Liked him and um, George felt very strong about him. And, and, uh, How much difference maybe was there between him and the grade and the next guy on the board? There were uh, three or four players there that were fairly close. Yeah. Uh, D4, D4 guy who was a game, like 50 pounds or whatever, since he got to college. Like, <coughs> you think, is this frame about Max Dollar, or do you guys think you can still have some good weight to him? I'm not sure really how much weight he needs to have. I think he's uh, pretty good just the way he is. Uh, normally you see these guys, especially in those positions, uh, over the first two, three years, uh, put on about 10 pounds. But I'm not saying he necessarily needs to be uh, 252 pounds. I mean, that's, not, that's a pretty healthy outside linebacker. He's good against uh, um, the run and the pass. He, he's got, uh, the thing that uh, I think is one of his strengths is the way he uses his arms and his hands. He sets those nice and tight. He's got a great stab move, uh, which is important for a pass rusher. Um, 
and, and now he just listen. He needs to transfer it over to, to, to this level, like all the rookies do. So um, he's got he's got work ahead of him to do that. But I think he's a he's an ener energy giver. He's going to come in, and you're going to see that uh, when you have a chance to meet with him, that he'll bring uh, very positive energy into into the locker. Now he's been nicked up a lot, a little bit throughout college. I mean, did that factor into your decision making at all? You got any concern about that at all? Yeah, listen, we checked with Rick and our docs, and uh, and they felt good about it. Um, so, I mean, he, again, he had a pretty good season this last year. So, felt pretty good about that. You talk about the energy energizes. How does he do that? Well, you, you'll see with his personality. He's, uh, a great personality about him. You know, yeah. When you have a chance, you're going to be. Well, when you have a chance, you'll, you'll, see, what, you'll see what you see. Well, both you and John have talked several times here uh, since the end of the season about that one of the things you're looking for is passion. You want players who play with passion. How do you see that in how yeah, play? Relentless, relentless football player. He's going to give you a, an honest snap every snap. Um, tremendous motor. Uh, great attitude. Holds it tangibles, I, I think, uh, are real positive. And, and I, I, I've said this before that your offensive line, your defensive line, they make everybody around them better. And so if, those, if they're playing at a high level, um, you know, your, um, it works out pretty good for you. Sometimes they're not the flashiest picks in the world, but yet uh, there, there's at no time that that's uh, more obvious than when, you, when you're in the playoffs. When those two groups are dominating, uh, those are the teams that are normally playing in that final game. That's just how, that's how it works. And it's year after year after year that that takes place. Were you close to taking a quarterback? There was a report earlier in the week that came out that said, Maybe negotiations weren't going the right way with Alex, and you were thinking about quarterback. No, that's not, the negotiations. Uh, that's not true. Um, you're sitting at the twenty-third pick. You look at everybody, and so um, uh, absolutely. I mean, we checked the quarterbacks out, uh, but by no means was it anything to do with Alex's play or her or contract or anything else. It had nothing to do with it. So, um, but we, we looked at every position across the board, and, and uh, that, that's. Uh, that's how we went. And did you get any trade offers that you seriously considered? Well, I, I would tell you the the phone was right, right for the kid that, that went before us. So, um, so they don't tell you exactly who they want, but um, but the phones were ringing at that time. I'm sure they were working both us and Philadelphia, and uh, that's how it went. Is he just a is he a run stopper, pass rusher guy? Pass rusher. Does he make plays? In the, in the yes, he's passing about, the he, he has pass rush ability, and um, you know maybe you get to see a couple clips on him, and, and um, you, you'll see that he's very explosive off the ball. At the same time, he's strong uh, and uh, does a pretty good job against the run. Is, is it safe to say at this point that he's better against the pass than he is against the run? I mean, just give a quick evaluation of the run. Yeah, I think at that level, he was, good, he was good both ways. I mean, he made some huge plays. It seemed like when you watch the bigger games, when they needed a play, he ended up making the making the play. Um, and uh, I think that, that kind of jumped out at, at, at John and I. And uh, so I, I wouldn't tell you. I, at that level, he did, he did both. I weren't allowed to, I didn't think there were a tremendous amount of pass rushers in this draft. Um, my number, so I have, but I thought he was right, right up there for the best of us. What few ways? I'm sorry. Did you see him drop into coverage much at all, or are you sort of projecting that he can do that? Yeah. Well, they worked him out at that. I mean, but that's not what he did. He kind of, a couple times they fire zoned him into coverage, but that's not that wasn't their defense. Um, but you know, when, when you work him out, you you felt like that that he could do that. Does he have that kind of natural bend? That all those very good edge pass rushers seem yeah, to have the edge. ankles are. Yeah, he can edge like crazy. He gets. Uh, he's going to present the tackles a low aggressive target. Get a chance to pop. You take a peek at the uh, one on ones from the seam because you get rep after rep after rep with him, showing that, seeing how low he is off the ground. 
guys had, you know, Marquis Lee still on the board, Dark Ways Denard on the board. But you look at the history of you and John, you guys kind of go for linemen. Just kind of why was that, and like how does that kind of tie into the thinking when taking the first well, round? I, I think they make everybody better. So uh, you have an explosive defensive line that you can throw different combinations of, uh, at the offense with, and, and uh, it makes the secondary better, it makes the linebackers better. That's just how, how it works. Where's uh, Tom Bahali at right now physically? I, I mean, is he doing great. Plan to use him in third down situations, or I mean, what's the with D Ford and him? Where what's the situation look like? Well, there's a chance they're both on the field at the same time, right? So, um, but Tom is fine. Yeah, Tom is healthy and been in our workouts, working his tail off. So he's doing good. Is there any concern about Thomas' weight? There's reports out there he came up 20 pounds overweight the other week. Yeah, that's not. Only works hard in Tom. Andy, would you take a Manziel if, you, if Cleveland had to take it? I would have called you first to make sure it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, a, no, he's, a, he's a heck. Of, he's a heck. That's right. He's a heck of a football player. He's a heck of a football player. Is that a yes or no? I'm not going to my answer. Because I want you to. <laughs> <laughs> Only if I had to call you. All right. All right. Thanks. Have a good night. We're here with Chief GM John Dorsey. John, D. Ford, uh, you talked a lot about him already, but uh, what makes him the right fit for the Kansas City Chiefs? So one, he was the highest rated player on the board. Uh, initially, we had identified him early on as one of the core four guys who we thought would be there at the 23rd position. It just so happens that of that core, he was the highest rated guy. And as it unfolded and unfolded, uh, you saw what was going to happen. and. That, I mean, he was there, and it fell kind of the way that you know we thought it would fall. And, and, and I'm very happy with who we acquired here. And you guys haven't really beat around the bush too much. He's here to rush the passer. That's what he's. That's why he got drafted, right? Yeah. I mean, this is today's football. I mean, you got to be able to put pressure on on the, uh, on the opposing quarterbacks, and he gives you an element of pass rush. That splendid in my eyes. I mean, I'm being a former defensive guy. Anytime you can. You know, cut the timing down and, and make the, you know, the quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. That's a good thing. Okay, constant pressure means a lot. I mean, it's just it's constant all the time. And if you're fresh, guys are going after the quarterback. That just makes your whole unit as a defense that much better. How long do you think the transition, or how difficult do you think the transition will be for him to make that adjustment from a defensive end rush into an outside linebacker? You know what? If you really watch him move around, see everybody tries to pigeonhole him as a defensive end. I mean, there are various times during the during the games that he stands up and actually plays outside linebacker. So he's accustomed to playing outside linebacker. It just so happened that the scheme sometimes that the Auburn ran required him to have his hand down on the ground, and sometimes he stood up. So he's quite familiar with the transition of, of playing outside linebacker. That's that I'm, to me, that's not going to be a hard thing at all to do. I know you're not inside Sutton's head, but uh, any chance we see all three of those guys, Tom Ali, Justin Houston, and D. Ford on the field at the same time? You know what? How much fun would that would be? Be pretty good. I think that'd be very good. And being as creative as Bob is, I'm sure he'll find certain little packages and he may actually put those three out there. He's a he's a talker. He likes to talk a little trash sometimes to his opponents. He's got kind of Who's an edge that, to Ford? him. Yeah, yeah. He's Steve Ford is a good dude. I no, mean, uh, not in a bad way. He's got kind of an edge to him. I mean, is that? He, a no, no. What it is? He's competitive. He's yeah. prideful. Uh, whenever you can get prideful guys that are competitive and are completely passionate about the game, that's not a bad thing. I mean, I kind of admire that myself. Yeah, he was asked about Jadavian Clowney and was kind of uh, taking a couple of shots at the guy. I think maybe some players got a little tired of being. Ask questions, especially other pass rushers, about the number one overall pick. Yeah, you probably have to ask that to him when he gets here tomorrow. I'm excited to meet him. I know a lot of people are. Uh, uh, I think he's a pianist too. Ask him about his ability to play the piano. You spent 15 minutes talking to him at the combine. I spent more than 15 minutes. He may have been at Senior Bowl too. I got a chance to talk to him at Senior Bowl too. He was very confident he was going to be a first round pick before, about 10 hours before that. He gave some quotes to an Alabama newspaper saying he knew he was going to be a first round pick. He hadn't heard much about the second round. Confidence is always, a, you know, I think, you know, you, you like to have, uh, you know, mature guys that have, you know, confidence in their abilities. So there's nothing to matter with a little bit of confidence in your ability to play a game of football. Moving forward, you mentioned the wide receiver position is very deep in this year's draft. Yep. 
is that a position you're going to address at some point moving forward in the draft? You know what? You never know. I mean, as, you, as it unfolds, you see what's there. You see how that board talks to you and, and says, okay, is this truly the best guy? So I'm going to let the board talk to you because we've spent relentless time and effort and hours putting that board together and sometimes, um, again, be patient, don't jump the board and just let it just work, let the board work itself because it usually falls to the way it's supposed to. I'm sure you got some phone calls about it, but uh, especially being one pick away from Johnny Football falling to you, having the opportunity to pick him, were you surprised that, that you even got that close to where he was at 23? Or? I mean, he's a, I mean that, to me that's a hypothetical right now because I know at 23, okay, I know who we acquired D Ford. You know, the other guy, you know what? He's, uh, he went ahead of us, so I really wasn't worried about it. You said you had four players in mind. I guess you're not going to tell me who those other three are. are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay, John, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thanks, John. Okay. Hey, guys, it's been a long day. Um, we got a pretty good football player here, and I mean in Boston City. Um, so with that, I'll answer, you know, take you all those questions right now, but we're very excited right now with this this new uh, picture we just picked up here. A lot of people had thought maybe you would go wide receiver. There were a lot of thoughts out there. All along, were you thinking defense and especially defensive line? No, I mean, all along, what I've always said is, you know, that board's going to kind of, when you sit down in the 20s, that board's going to kind of dictate to you um, and you, you let it unfold. As you, as you well know, every draft is different. All scenarios fall in different orders, um, but at the end of the day, he was our highest rated player on that board, and we decided to go in that direction, and we feel we got a very fine football player. Andy was in there earlier, and kind of indicated that, you know, as the picks clicked off, he was glaring, like the lights were on his name on your board, and it was just a matter of waiting until your time came. Well, all along, we had, like I said earlier, we had targeted four guys, and he was in that grouping of four. And as it began to unfold, you could see certain things begin to work out. And then, you know, when it unfolded, we all kind of looked at each other and goes, you know what? We just had a little pass rush here to the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Looking in the long term, how does D complement Justin Houston? Well, I mean, this guy's a good football player. He has the unique ability to rush the passer, and I think in today's National Football League, the way the game has begun to increase in speed, what this does is, you know, it gives you another component at the pass rushing position, and I think that is very vital in today's football. And as everybody knows that when you can rush the passer, it makes the back seven even look a little bit better. John, is there a guy that he maybe reminds you of who's played in the league, his skill set, his size? Not, not particularly. I mean, I could name some names. Uh, I'd like to reserve that for a later date, but uh, I admire him not only as a person, um, but again, I keep adding his ability to rush the pass. I mean, if you look at him later into the season as he goes along, we clearly thought he was the second best pass rusher in this draft. If you watch the national championship game, against Florida State, if you watch him against Texas A&M, even if you watch him in the Senior Bowl, the way he dominated the people at the Senior Bowl, uh, he's got a unique trait. Not only is it speed, but like the great pass rushers, what they have is they have this strong interior hip when they start leading to the quarterback. He doesn't lose his balance and he continues to drive forward. And to me, that's a very rare trait. John, who else are you considering? Well, we, I mean, there were, uh, you know, three other guys, and they had kind of peeled off there. And at the end of the day, we got the guy we really wanted. Were you taking Manziel if he was there for you, Craig? Yeah, that's, that's such a hypothetical because uh, he wouldn't be for us. I mean, so that, was, that wasn't even in the equation. John, how do you feel about where you guys are at my receiver right now? Well, I think uh, right now what we have um, – I think we're going to be very competitive at that position. What we're going to have to do here is, you know, all along we've said the wide receiver position uh, has extended depth, not only in the first round but the second, third. I think as we see tomorrow in the second round, you'll see a lot of these receivers start to peel off there in the second round. But there's still, in each round, there's still other receivers. And, you know, if everything works out, maybe that guy that you've identified falls to you. 
John, were you close to trading out of that pick or, or not? You know what? Our phones were so active and busy. It was, uh, it was kind of fun, to be honest with you. We had, um, we had five or six, uh, you know, teams that we were talking to as, um, as this was beginning to unfold. But at the end of the day, when you take the player, the compensation offered, and you really think about which truly is the best, uh, you go with the player in this regard because the compensation didn't outweigh what the player's value was. We thought the player's value was the best thing for us. I know the teams don't really tell you when they have you on the phone who they're looking at, but I mean, once Van Zell went off, did the phones go silent? Um, well, by then we'd already done our legwork. We kind of, you know, we were talking five or six teams, and then at that time we made, um, you know, it was we knew we were going to take at the time. Yeah. Um, okay, Bob. He was just on the phone here, and he said that he had very little conversation with you guys. Had the typical combine interview. That tells me that somebody in this operation. Pinpointed him early and didn't want to create the impression that you guys were interested. I know this. We sat him in the, uh, the 60 player interview at the combine. He left, and all of us were going, "What a nice kid!" I mean, this is a good kid. I mean, you really. I mean, you guys are going to love him tomorrow when he gets here. Uh, I thought it was interesting. One of our scouts got a text from the head coach of Auburn, and they go, "You just got a champion," um, and you guys will see that tomorrow when he comes in the interview. But that 15 minutes was enough for you? Well, no, it's, it's, I, it's, it's, it's part not of it. just a 15 minutes. It's, it's also you know, a pro so. day. I mean, there, there's different phases in there. And each, each time you walk away, and everybody gave ringing endorsements uh, on, on this guy. So I had, you know, I, had, I had no reservations whatsoever about his character or his ability to play the game or his ability to, to be uh, a good football player. Last one, Herbie. Oh, sorry. I got you, Adam. You got it. Well, last one. Oh, you're right. We're going to get Adam here. I got it. I got it. John, Dion was talking a little bit how surprised he was that you guys called him and said that he answered the phone and he was talking to you. What was his reaction like when he said, hey, we're taking you? He's excited. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and that's a good thing. You, you want the players to be excited to come within your organization. And slowly as we go along here, you want more and more players to be excited here because you know that's kind of what it's about I and mean, he's going to be part of that locker room culture that we talk about he'll be a fine addition of that locker room culture all right last one Adam. john are you at all confident you can get back in the second round or higher in the third round or realistically does it look like you can pick an eight next? well that's all hypothetical because it's not going to be from due diligence i mean we're going to try to do you know, all the different scenarios. I, I think what we have to do uh, as a group is we're going to reconvene tomorrow. Um, we're going to kind of run through the board, assess it, uh, see the strengths and weaknesses, as, as just kind of see how things unfolded here. You know, it's a little bit late right now, but we're going to see how things unfold. And then we're going to make a determination at that time, you know, do we want to move up and, and try to acquire some players, or do we stay pat or we move back? But I think what you have to do is you have to explore all these opportunities, um, and, that's, and that's what you do to you know, what's in the best interest of the organization. All right, thank you. See you guys okay. soon as I